In winter, the conditions in Puget Sound are ideal for shellfish when the water is cold and clear. If you can see it here in the camera. Joth Davis says it's also great for seaweed. It's got a kind of a nutty flavor and it's firm and crisp. So it's not at all what you'd expect. And that's just right off of the, right off of the you know, plant. I love it. It thrives here in Hood Canal, what geographers call a fjord. Deep in the center, shallower on the edges, and perfect for seaweed production. It's got lots of nitrogen, which is helpful because that's what seaweed needs to grow. You can't tell from above, but beneath these buoys at Davis's farm lies an opportunity. At the end of March, we can have blades that are uh, 12 feet long. It's so really quite amazing. Seaweed is a long established industry in Asia. It is picking up in the east coast of the United States and aquaculture in general is highly valued in Puget Sound. So why hasn't seaweed become a growing industry here? We are not going to grow kelp without having a use for it. And why Davis has been in marine farming for 30 plus years. It's just a poet. After getting his PhD in fishery science at the University of Washington, he realized seaweed is also good at reversing the effects of climate change. Before kelp, Davis raised oysters. And it's these oysters that revealed what seaweed can do to reduce ocean acidification. It's what happens when carbon dioxide in the air soaks into the sea, then undergoes a chemical reaction that releases carbonic acid in the ocean, a phenomenon that is happening in Washington waters. Its nickname is Global Warming's Evil Twin. Meg Chatsey is an ocean acidification specialist at UW's Sea Grant Program. She says the concerns over this first emerged from Puget Sound thanks to the area's large shellfish industry. And those shellfish have shells made out of calcium carbonate, which dissolves when seawater gets too acidic. And local hatcheries began to notice. When those uh, juvenile shellfish started to suffer and, and in some cases die because of acidification, the alarm bells went off because people saw it happening. Seaweeds are technically algae, but like plants, they absorb CO2 and turn it into oxygen. The idea is if carbon dioxide in the water is the source of the problem for the shellfish, then if you take that carbon dioxide back out, uh, at least very locally, that might improve the seawater conditions so that the shellfish are, are not as harmed by acidification. <laughs> Marine biologists like Davis, who already had that oyster farm near Hood Head, got the green light to experiment in 2016. It enabled us to basically build a kelp farm and we did that. And then we found out, gosh, it just grows so well here. He also wondered about kelp's commercial potential. This two and a half acre farm yields 12 to 15,000 pounds of kelp a year. Growing kelp is actually fairly easy to do. Figuring out what to do with kelp is a lot more difficult. It is a very challenging endeavor. Marcos Shear splits his time between Bainbridge Island and his own kelp farm in southeast Alaska. He's a maritime law attorney who became interested in the prospects of a seaweed boom. About 2015, I started looking at this. Why Why hasn't this happened? Shear and Davis say a strict permitting process overseen by the Washington Department of Natural Resources makes it challenging to launch a seaweed farm. That's just the way it is here in the state. We're, we're well regulated and um, as a result there are folks that are um, in the permit stage now trying to get permits to do what we're doing. Seaweed farming is new to our area so there is no like playbook that you can go to that says even for the agencies that are in charge of this process. And seaweed is relatively new as a food item in the United States. It is a building market and uh, and part of that, you know, it's a chicken and egg thing, right? People haven't had it available in their, you know, when they go out to a restaurant, so they haven't been able to build that familiarity. But he's looking to change that. The ribbon kelp that Shear grows is available at local markets like Seattle's Iwajimaya, and he's putting it in products like seaweed salsa, pickles, even organic fertilizer. That is a sea turtle. Davis is also making things with his fun. kelp, so. like these snacks. Powering kelp. And he's optimistic that kelp could be a crop of the future. I'd love to see more activity in the growing kelp because, as I said, it's got all these sustainability benefits. In Jefferson County, Christine Pay, K5 News.